Hello nerds, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Maria and I like to make technology videos on the internet. And if you can't tell, I recently moved apartments, so that's why you haven't seen me for a little bit. And today I want to talk about code reviews. This is something I mentioned in my previous video about the mistakes I made as a junior engineer. And I wanted to elaborate on it and give all my advice about how to be a good author and a good reviewer of code reviews. Code reviews are something that you will be doing throughout your entire career. So no matter what stage you are in your career, like principal engineer, mid-level, junior, senior, you will be doing code reviews and writing your own pull requests or whatever your company calls them. And even if you're new to your company or fresh grad who hasn't done many code reviews, you should start doing them as soon as possible. Why? Because for one thing, it's expected of you. And the second thing is that it's the easiest way and fastest to know what's going on in your team, know what people are working on, improve your own code, and do some knowledge transfer amongst your teammates. And I know at first, doing code reviews might be scary because you might be the only one blocking this change from going into production. And then what if it has a bug and the code breaks and you have to write a root cause analysis document and go through the whole process. That's gonna happen inevitably. It's happened to me many times in my career. It happens to my teammates. Doesn't matter what level you are, it will happen. People make mistakes. But either way, doing code reviews helps the system be more resilient and helps you improve the code base overall. And now let's talk about the two different sides to a code review. So you could be the author of the pull request where you spent a lot of time and hard work writing the code and then writing the pull request description. And then there's the reviewer who was pinged on Slack and brought out of their state of flow in their own work and has to do context switching. No one really likes doing that. So sometimes people set up times during the day when they will review things like before lunch or something like that. And I heard this one analogy about describing code reviews before where each person on the team is like a blind person touching an elephant. So you don't know the whole picture yourself, but one person is describing the trunk, the other person is touching its butt and like describing that. So each person on your team has a different expertise in different areas and only all together do you know what's going on. But it's good to, you know, have two people who know what the trunk is like and that kind of thing. So that's what the purpose of a code review should be. So today I wanted to focus on the different aspects of writing a pull request and being the author of one and also reviewing them. And I'm not going to go into all like the linting and the CI checks because that should already be available at your company and be automatically done. But we're going to talk about all of the other things that come into pull requests. And I'm also going to link to my author and reviewer checklist in the description if you want to make a copy of that in Google Docs and use that for yourself. Let's first get started with talking about the author's checklist. If you are the one writing a pull request, the things I want you to keep in mind are to, first of all, keep it small. You want to have one isolated piece of logic in this one pull request. You don't want to have multiple different things. So I want you to split them up, like make one PR for the DB model change, then one for writing an API, then one for this and one for that. And you can also stack these different changes by making branches off of branches using Git. You can also merge all these mini pull requests into a major feature branch and then fully roll that out into production however you want to do it, but you can stack smaller changes incrementally. Or you can think about it as having one single thesis for your pull request. This goes into the concept of atomicity, where you have one single change and it makes it easier to figure out if there was a bug or if you need to revert this change, you can quickly and easily do that. And how many lines of changes would I recommend? It really depends on you, but I would say a guideline would be like between 200 to 400 lines of code change. Some more reasons about why you should be doing this is that it decreases the barrier to actually getting your pull request reviewed. Like you can put small pull request and someone can review it within 10 minutes. It makes the PR lower effort for those reviewers who are already annoyed with many reviews. And since it's a small pull request, it will actually increase the quality of code review because sometimes if it's a huge pull request, people's eyes glaze over and then they will skip different things and only focus on what they think is important and not focus on everything. So this will, in general, decrease any blind spots that the reviewer will have. The next thing on the author checklist is to have a good pull request description. So for myself, what I think is a good description is that you should describe the purpose of the change. So giving context about why are you even doing this? Like, why do we need this new database? What project is this related to? You can also link to different tickets. Like we use Linear at my company, use, you might use Jira or Asana, and that might give more context as well. But just giving like a short, two sentence summary of it will really help any of your reviewers easily understand the reasoning behind why you are doing this. You also want to describe any technical decisions. And these can be little subheadings on your PR, like purpose, 
technical decisions and you should describe like any main changes that you made like you added this thing you deleted this you updated this so describe all of those and you can do it in like bullet point format and then very importantly how did you test this code so you might have tested it in a dev sandbox in staging so those types of things you might have written unit tests or even integration tests would be great so to prove to the reviewer that this code is working and that you made sure that it works or you could say that you tested it manually like maybe it's a front end change and you could also include a link for how the reviewer can test it or even a video or a gif or something would be really useful as well and my third point is that you should annotate your pr to leave some comments in it just in case you want people to focus on a certain area or if you want to provide further context for something but in theory you shouldn't need to do this but just in case you can see that someone might have a question about something then you can leave a comment and be like okay this is why i did it this way so describing and giving more information is always helpful and another major point is i always want you to review your prs first so this will also help you with being a reviewer but i want you to take the time to look over all of your files, make sure you're not missing anything or you don't have something extra in it. Clean up your code so that you are happy with the comments that you might get on your code. And another question you might have is how do I pick who to get a review from? Sometimes it's easy and it might be a focused specific area that you know, okay, this person on my team knows about X thing, so I will get them to always review this. But you don't always want to be doing that because it will have some bias where you and that person are always getting the same reviews from each other and nothing will ever change. You want to have more diversity and expertise spread across your team. So basically you want different people's opinions on your pull request. Some questions you can ask yourself are who has context on this, who has skills related to this, and who cares deeply about this change. Another important question is who should learn about this? For example, I have some junior developers on my team and I can send them PRs because maybe they've never done something before and I want for them to learn how to do this from my PR. So in general, the perspective I want you to have as an author of pull requests is that it's not your code or like my code, it's our code. You know, it's not like a communist thing, but it's like, it is the team's code. The team is working on this together. So anything you merge belongs not just to you, but also to the reviewers and the people who help you along the way. And also another point just about manners with pull requests. If someone leaves you a comment and it's just a suggestion, but you decide not to take it, then you should at least respond to that and explain why you decided not to go that route just in case they look back at your pull request and are like oh why didn't they take my suggestion how rude just be nice about that kind of stuff so somebody asked you to review their code now what do you do as a reviewer i'm gonna split this part into general tips and the big ideas and then into this checklist of 10 different things i want you to look at when reviewing any pr so one idea i want you to take into looking into anyone's code is to focus on the why hopefully they have a good pr description and I want you to first read that. Don't just jump into the files and start looking through them. When I review PRs, I usually have one tab or like one monitor with the description and then I'll open up another tab with the actual files change so I can also refer back to the pull request description in case I don't understand something about like why they did it that way. Then the next step, of reviewing a PR is that I want you to first skim it. Scroll through the files and see what is of interest to you, what kind of changes did they make. And also a good tip that some people do is to always review the unit tests first because that kind of tells you what are they trying to change, what new things are they adding or updating. Also as a code reviewer, you should have a light touch. You shouldn't be like, rewrite this whole thing, this is how I would write it. You have to respect the judgment and the motivation of the person who wrote this code. So you want to also be nicer to them. Any minor issues should just be suggestions or nitpicks that you leave on the PR. Generally, if there are just suggestions that you have and there's nothing blocking the change, then you should approve the PR and they can go back and make those fixes, of course but you should still approve it on GitHub. But even though you are nice and respectful as a code reviewer, I still want you to make sure that you're reviewing every single line of code. Don't just rubber stamp it and be like, looks good to me, like ship it squirrel and all of that stuff. In general, you can probably look through around 20 lines per minute. And if it takes you longer to review that, then that means that this section of code is confusing and maybe you can leave a comment and be like hey improve the readability here and more of a note on how to write respectful comments and give feedback is that you have to remember courtesy tone is very important when you have a written format of communication so a lot of times when you see a comment as the author you might see like oh it's kind of hostile and they're like why did you do it this way like this looks so bad and all that kind of thing like you think the worst 
So as the reviewer, you want to write things in a nicer way and make more suggestions. So the easiest way to frame your feedback and your comments is to write it in the format of a question. So try to make your comments as genuine questions instead of suggestions. And if the code is just completely wrong, then you should just open up a DM to that person and talk to them, maybe like do a Google Meets chat with them. It's, it will be easier instead of going back and forth within code review comments. And another nice thing you can do is to leave a comment when you see code that you like. That is really helpful and gives people a nice you know, boost to their day. You can say something like, oh, I never knew about this. Thanks for teaching me about it. Or wow, this is such a clever way of doing that. Another thing that I learned about giving feedback recently is that you can frame it in the way of doing more of X and less of Y. Some feedback I got was like, okay, we should move more code into well-named functions and do less comments because if you name a function, a descriptive name, then you don't need to add so many comments to describe what the code is doing. And also for your comments, you want to be as clear as possible. So don't be super vague and just be like, oh, just do this thing or read the docs on this. It's like, that's also rude, assuming that person hasn't read the docs, but also you're not including any link to those docs or like the section of the docs that you want them to read. So be very crystal clear and specific in your feedback. Last but not least, we're gonna go over the 10 things that I look for in every pull request that I'm reviewing in order of most important to least important. So the first thing I'll look at whenever I review a pull request is if there were any API design changes, like are there any new functions, classes, or endpoints being added? This is more important, especially when it is going to be externally facing and other teams are going to be using this code and calling these functions because the method signatures are important, the data models are important, like what types are being sent back and forth, what values are being returned from different functions. You need to make sure that all of this stuff is making sense because it's harder to change down the line when other teams or other services are using this code. You also want to think about any complex interactions or item potency issues you might have. The second thing is considering performance and scalability of this code. Here is when you can point out any potential performance bottlenecks or inefficient code that you see. For example, you should try to batch SQL queries when you can. You can also recommend any short circuiting opportunities where you can early exit the code. Another major thing is backwards compatibility. And if they're making a change to an API, Will it still work? Are the new arguments optional? Do they have a default return value? These types of things. And also making sure that you're not changing the position of different arguments because then that will get messed up, especially proto changes. Like if you're using proto buff and you're changing the number of the arguments, do not do that. That will break everything. The next thing is to check for all the different edge cases in the code. And this is where understanding the code and the why comes into play because maybe now that you understand what this code is supposed to be doing, you can catch areas where the person missed an edge case and comment about that or different scenarios that the author might have missed like empty data being sent or input validation or error handling. So now that you've gotten all those major issues out of the way, you can look more at the styling of the code. So then I want you to look at the code placement, the naming, the spelling, and the readability of the code. Thinking about, is this code in the right place? Like, is it a sensible file? Is it the name correct? Are the functions named well? Is the API calling the correct service? So like I mentioned, it's cleaner to write better function names than to add comments to describe what the code is doing. In general, consistency with how your company or how your team is doing stuff in the code base is preferred over doing things in like, your right way. And if you as the reviewer have to reread the same code five times to understand it, then that means it is not readable and you should ask them to improve this code and you can give them suggestions, but do it in a nice way and ask questions. Also check if there's excessive duplication or over reuse of the same code in multiple places. You can recommend that they move it into a helper function. So try to keep things dry. And I want you to make sure that they're not doing any dangerous operations or bad practices for whatever programming language you're using. This is very language specific, so you might have more like nil pointer errors in Golang or different issues in different languages. And just the general code cleanup is if they have any debugging comments, tell them to remove those or any commented out code. It's a preferable not to leave to do comments like, okay, do this thing in the future because then that just leaves more comments in the code and you're not gonna actually keep track of it. Just make Jira or linear tickets or something for yourself in the future to do so that you will remember to do these things instead of seeing a to-do like two years later from some random person who's not at the company anymore. And also make sure that there's no like free riders in the code, like random files that were somehow added. So leave a comment doing that. You can also just leave a, the eyes emoji comment and then that person will be like, oh, oops, 
I missed this and delete it. And another important thing is to look at any documentation and tests that the person wrote. Make sure that there's adequate test coverage and ensure that the tests are actually well structured and understandable. And also make sure that every exposed function and API is actually being well tested. And my last thing is I want you to make sure that the code is actually following security best practices. You're not exposing any unencrypted information and any API endpoints are being securely authenticated. If there are any permissions changes, you're making sure that the person has the correct permissions to access this. All the other stuff, I'll just throw it in the doc so you can review that. And let me know if you have any other advice in the comments. I'd love to hear it and how I can improve doing code reviews because it's always a learning process, you know? I've been doing this for like six years already, but every day I will try to improve and get better at code reviews. And I hope that you found this video helpful. I have more coming up, so please like and subscribe if you are looking forward to more videos and let me know what other content you would like to see. So with that, I'll see you next time. Bye.